Hi, greetings. Uh, this is going to be about. It's quite a serious um, danger and uh, spiritual danger which people aren't aware of. People who are lost, people who are haven't received the forgiveness of sins and the Holy Spirit in the world, um, don't realise that they're deceived and they're. Uh, everybody's uh, looking for answers and uh, so this is just a warning about uh, people who are seeking answers um, for the death of their perhaps a loved one or contacting uh, a loved one and uh, and also a warning for those people who have itchy ears who like to try new fads and get into the mystic and the uh, occult and all that that sort of areas and I, I just want to share as clearly as I possibly can the, the serious dangers of um, what's afoot and what what's in what's been revealed about the spirit world. Um, now the whole world has been has access who's in the um, vicinity of the Holy Spirit. I'm just go let's go to John one. Uh, so if you're seeking a medium or somebody to tell you what what happens after after we die, there's only one person who's been in the grave and returned, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't look any further than that, if you reject that, you're going to be uh, deceived and, and seriously hurt, and uh, you will believe a lie, and that lie will lead you into hell. And you may have confirmation that um, that somebody's telling you something about your loved one, and that sort of authenticates that it's true. So I just want to give a few thoughts about um, how you can be deceived by a lying spirit. So the Holy Word says to try the spirits, because the devils believe. And um, and I, I'll give a brief. In my own uh, understanding, I'll back it up with scripture um, after I've I've given this talk. Just start there, John 1. Now, everyone has uh, know what's right and wrong, because they have the Holy Spirit upon our conscience. So when we do something wrong, whether we, uh, we're in the dark and we don't know that it's wrong, the Holy Spirit will convict our conscience that we're, we're guilty. And if we um, suppress that conscience, our conscience will become like hard bits of skin. It'll become tough and thick and we won't listen anymore. And then we'll be damned. We'll be stuck in that, uh, unable to grow, unable to learn, unable to be corrected in our error, in our sin, in our mistake, in our transgression. Uh, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke. John. John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and life was the light of men. And light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of that light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew it not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of god and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth john bare witness of him and cried saying this was he of whom i spake he that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me and of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. 
the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, ye have declared him. And this is the record when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? Right, I'll end there. So the light. Now, Jesus, the only person to taught, to taught us, teach us that uh, we were sinful was the Lord Jesus Christ. When he, when he came, um, now God is uh, f three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, when we're born, we're born outside the knowledge of knowing Jesus because we haven't believed if you're unsaved and lost and we haven't received him then you have no understanding of that light. But you have the light in the world and that's what convicts conscience and that's the Holy Spirit. We have God is God the Father, God the Son, who's the Word, who became flesh and dwelt among us, as the scripture testifies, and John bear witness. John was a very special witness and a prophet like, the, um, like in the Old uh, Testament, had prophets, God called prophets, to speak his word. So John was a very special vessel of that dispensation of time when Jesus Christ was about to be born in the flesh. So God, Jesus was fully God and fully man on the earth and he died for the sins of the world. And he revealed by that light, by his light, by being in the world, and that light in the world and John as a witness and the Holy Spirit as a witness testifying that he was God he, and by his miracles, by his works he um, proved, he uh, showed that he was um, who he said he was and the Father witnessed by the Holy Spirit the truth of all things that he was in fact the living God in the flesh God the Son sent to die for the sins of the world and it was only Jesus that called us out as sinners no, we, uh, otherwise we'd have remained lost in the darkness in our sin and uh, like the scripture says the darkness won't come and seek out the light because it will convict them of their guilt and so Jesus Christ um, removed the cloak of sin so um, there's no there's no other advocate to God than Jesus Christ and now getting back to um, mediums uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ you won't know the truth of the afterlife and it was only Jesus who went into the ground and I'm going to read a parable that Jesus gave um, and Jesus went in Jesus took upon all the sins of mankind and he suffered them that all, may, all sinners may be redeemed so by taking upon our death and our sin and then being innocent and then being betrayed and lifted by sin on the cross he gave his life up he allowed himself to be lifted up on the cross because he was God nobody could overthrow God so God in his wisdom knew had a plan that he would be betrayed by uh, Judas Iscariot and that would hand him over to the authority, the wicked uh, powers that wanted to get rid of him. And by that means he was lifted up. And even, even the powers who tried to arrest Jesus couldn't lay hold of him, they fell backwards. So Jesus helped them arrest him. And he was arrested, uh, illegally convicted, tried and executed. And he suffered a cursed death on the, on the crucifixion, one of the most agonizing deaths. And before he was crucified, he was um, cruelly beaten and tortured and mocked by the uh, Gentile world, by the Gentile authorities, because they're brutish. And he suffered an awful death, and he, he, he took that in love. He took that willingly. He never complained. And he suffered, though, all the sins of, them, of the world. And he, he went down into the, in, in the grave. Now, I'm going to read a parable where Jesus shows what is in the grave. He's... He, by his omnipotence and by his uh, knowledge, complete knowledge, he's revealing in a parable, before he uh, was crucified, what where he was going. And uh, that starts in uh, Luke 16. Um, let me find the parable. Uh, I'm sure it's Luke 16. 
Yeah, uh, it gives a power to the rich man. Right, um, right, it starts in verse 9, I uh, start in verse 19. There was a uh, this is Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. And that's not the Lazarus that was um, resurrected from the tomb. So, um, Jesus' personal friend. Um, this is another Lazarus. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which had laid at the ga his gate Full of, full of sores so that's the gate of the rich man he laid at the gate of this rich man's house suffering of sores you've got um, two extreme contrasts of life there rich rich and poor and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died now I I don't know if Jesus is uh, using fictional characters here or real characters. He's given a parable. He's given an example to teach. So um, whether they're real or not is is irrelevant uh, um, or insignificant to the teaching. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Now Abraham's bosom is uh, basically a reference to where you go when you die. You go back to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and he was buried and in hell so he didn't go back to Abraham's bosom. And uh, he lifted up his eyes being in torments and see if Abraham were far off. So Jesus is just shown, now this is probably the only place in scripture where it shows what is in, in um, there's also in um, when uh, King Saul went to see a, a soothsayer, a peeper, a wizard or somebody, a diviner, a spirit, somebody who contacted the spirit world and uh, had power with, 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 with these forces, with these evil spirits and called up the prophet Nathan against his will to give counsel to King Saul so we have a an insight into that's the righteous side that's the half of the division that uh, this is referring to in this parable and then the other half is, is, is a wicked people and so we, we can see a clear division in, in the grave at this time this is before Jesus' resurrection and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and see if Abraham are far off. And Lazarus in his bosom. So Lazarus is with Abraham, the righteous. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus. Now bearing in mind that was the beggar outside his house, all living, you know, for years and years and years. You know, send Lazarus, the servant, to come and minister to my wicked torment. But Abraham's Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good, good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. Right, so that's a very important lesson. When, what, this life is a probation that all may come to repentance towards God and faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and the free gift of eternal life. There's no other way to salvation. And it's in God's plan that once you die, there's a veil where your, your time's over and you're not allowed to look into these things. The Lord has put a, a lid on it. You know, there's a, it, 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 it's like um, a high, high security prison uh, compared to the public. You, uh, the two are separated, so one can't in interfere with the other. So when when we lose a loved one, there's a veil, and there's a reason for that veil because of faith, uh, and uh, to come to the knowledge of um, salvation, faith is required to apply uh, apply that to to Jesus Christ for salvation, 
and even then you still cannot once you've lived this life it's separate from from the heaven uh, the spiritual heavenly places where the righteous dead are in Christ Jesus in heaven and after the resurrection um, once Jesus went into the went into this um, place he preached and all the righteous in Abraham's bosom he brought up with him and all the wicked remained and that's how that's that's the lake of fire or that's where those who were condemned to the lake of fire remain waiting for the resurrection for their eternal judgment whereas the righteous have already been judged and they've been forgiven so they go immediately up to heaven so to die, today if you die if your loved ones die they're either in heaven or they're in hell and that's the sim simple plan of um, Jesus Christ <coughs> and he cried and said Father Abraham have mercy on me send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his tip of his finger in water and call my tongue for I am tormented in this flame but Abraham said son remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest the good things and likewise Lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and thou art tormented and besides all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so the two couldn't mix they're separate God has put a barrier between uh, the, the living the righteous and the wicked and also the living and the dead it, the only you cannot commune with those who've lived this life and died the only advocate you got with heaven is Jesus Christ and you can't communicate with your loved ones through Jesus Christ it, that it is a veil it, and there's a reason for that veil because it t today is our probation of faith to either come to salvation by believing or not which condemns us, which we remain condemned, uh, if you read John chapter 3, all those who believed have, have been taken out of condemnation, all those who remain in unbelief are still under that condemnation in their probation. And so when people are seeking answers to, well what's life about, where's my, dead, where's my loved ones gone, and they're seeking comfort, the only comfort and assurance that person can uh, lawfully receive in, in God's law is through Jesus Christ and they still may not know whether their loved ones are in hell or in heaven and that, that, that's something that a believer has to trust because you know um, you can't interfere with other people's choices so you have to choose for yourself in this life whether you want to believe and go to Abraham's bosom or go to the bosom of God who's in heaven on the right hand of God, who is Jesus Christ. And so you don't you don't pray to Abraham, you pray, you pray to God the Father, you pray, you pray with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and then you're redeemed and taken into that heavenly place spiritually while you remain on the earth. So when you die, you have that spiritual life within you, so you go where that spiritual life is offered from. If you don't have that spiritual life in you, that spirit, God's Holy Spirit, which is a gift a, a given as soon as the Lord Jesus is uh, sincerely believed, then you, you remain lost and you go into the grave. Now, the scriptures speaks of many, many uh, fallen hosts from heaven. We have demons, familiar spirits. Now, I'm not an expert, I'm a student of the word, but I can, I've had experience in these mediums and demonic forces, familiar spirits and, and the like. And I'll give a brief definition. I may be wrong here, so you'll have to not trust my word, but study the Holy Word in the King James Bible to learn and grow in your understanding of, of these things, these spiritual things. Now it's in my understanding a fallen angel is not different to a demon and a familiar spirit. And fallen angels are banished and chained. Demons I believe, and I think there's different opinions on what demons are, are once in the Old Testament angels left their heavenly realm came down to earth and bred with with women with human women 
and they produce vile um, demonic hybrids, half human, half fallen angel. And these were called the, the Nephilim. The Nephilim. And uh, when, when those um, creatures died, they, their disembodied spirits were become demons. So there's a whole host of demons. Now, that, I may be incorrect on that. Familiar spirits are, are different and they are a host of uh, spiritual beings that serve Satan, that serve the fallen angel Satan who became the devil. So, so uh, the devil is a, an angel, a powerful angel and uh, he fell from heaven and was banished and he, he absolutely hates God and he's against God and all, all things that are good and he wants to deceive the world to stop them from being saved and uh, being, he wants to win them in his dominion and his dominion will be hell and hell wasn't built for the human race it was built for these powerful angelic creatures that's why there's a division there's a division between the spiritual realm and the physical realm that we experience and there's a reason for that but God has put them in close proximity to the devils here to try us to test us and so there's an adversity to that which is good so you've got the you've got the the, the opposition the two poles fighting one another now God is purely holy and good he's not good and evil He's pure, whole, holy, and and the only God, and, and pure and righteous. Whereas the devil is the antithesis of that. He's wicked and fallen, and a created being that was banished from heaven, and placed on this earth, chained to this earth with his fallen host. And among that host are full, uh, familiar spirits, and these familiar spirits have been round since the beginning of time and uh, they claim, they, they, they see all things, they see things about your relatives, they, they can hang around your home. So if you haven't got the power of Jesus Christ in your life, you haven't got power over and knowledge and understanding over these forces, and these forces deceive. And people who look into these things, collect a host of these spirits, can become possessed by these spirits and overtaken, and these spirits can live in people. Um, they can eat, eat even somebody who's received Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ is uh, the strong man. He's the only one who could uh, overcome the power of the devil and these fallen spirits and hosts. If his eternal life's been received and that Holy Ghost has been received, um, those familiar spirits cannot get into the house, the temple of the believer, the person who's received that spirit. But that person can be oppressed, surrounded by deceptive spirits and these deceptive spirits are like a grapevine a false imitation of the Holy Spirit and they see things and they know things about your loved one now these mediums are devils and you need to weigh up what are their motives their motives are solely their own egos their importance because they they believe and they and these these uh, creatures do exist people openly worship the devil and the devil's a deceiver, he's a liar, so Satan is the father of all lies, the author of all lies. And deceives many people because it gives them a sense of importance. And there's, um, it's justified to give people comfort, but what it really does is it bonds people to a lie, keeps them away from Jesus Christ and their salvation, and it keeps them in bondage to this spiritual power. And uh, mediums all charge money. And if you speak against them, they're, they're hateful, they threaten to sue you, and they, they don't want their covetous power and title taken away from them. These people are deceived. They commune with these false spirits who spend, spend the time around your family and they know things about you that, that, that you wouldn't possibly know. And these are mediums, a mediator between that world and this world are demonic and they're deceived and anyone who puts their trust in them for comfort have denied Jesus Christ 
and so they're left to the power of these deceivers, these mediums, these spiritual gurus. You don't need any other advocate to know the meaning of life and the purpose of life other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a warning to anyone who's into all this mysticism, peeping, peeping wizards, looking into this the dark realms, tarot, um, uh, you know, contacting the dead, fortune tellers, tea leaf readers, all, all the sorcerers, all these things that are abomination to God. They are wicked, and they're all through the Old Testament and how every righteous. Uh, servant of God, every righteous king, every righteous prophet um, come up against this creeping into the body of, of the people, into the society of Israel and uh, it just led them astray into uh, child sacrifice, worshipping full spirits and these spirits manifest in so many different ways that they it's just so confusing, there's so many different versions and, and there's also cranks of that are just you know that don't have uh, contact with uh, evil spirits, but they are cranks. But there's some real genuine people who do commune with these spirits and can give you truth. But they don't give you <coughs> one hundred percent truth, and so they can give you some truth, but they're hiding behind their back the, the complete truth, and they've deceived these mediums, and they will follow these spirits. And they're spirit guides. You see, they have, they have, a, they see an apparition, and they see spirits. Now these spirits are not what they say they are, and it, it's like they haven't got an authority. And these mediums don't know any different how to check if they're being lied to. They're lying spirits, and they are deceived by these lying spirits, and that gives them power. And then they mediate between the the li what they claim is the living and the dead. But they're not the dead, they are demonic, and they appear as the dead. And uh, uh, the, uh, the devil can appear as the, an angel of light, an apostle of light. He could appear as a, a righteous preacher. He could appear as a fairy. He could appear as a, um, any apparition he wants to. Uh, fallen angels are powerful uh, transitional beings. They can change form. They can appear. There's different uh, shapes and sizes, uh, UFOs, they can appear as a UFO uh, to the people who, uh, who are deceived by them and, and have that, um, that spiritual eye opened in their life through uh, turning away from the truth and entertaining these spirits which will teach them and open them up and there's, there's so many different ways to open that eye. Um, children who've been um, abused and uh, sodomized will be become possessed by these spirits and that's what there's a um, there's a way of crafting this by evil people where they put a child through that for this very reason so they become demonically uh, possessed so that they can use that 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 vessel for deception and their own their own spiritual lust and um, these spirits uh, house these people and uh, they commune with lying spirits so if you're um, looking for answers about your loved one um, be warned because they will lead you to hell and if you believe it and believe that they're telling you the truth um, how I'll ask you the question how can you why can't you see them why aren't they teaching you how to see them to check and ask them well can you show me that you are who you say you are and of course they can't. The only thing that gives them credibility is somebody's seen it and they're ignorant and lost in the world and they don't know any different. So as soon as they see a spirit, they just presume that what they see is what, they, what it says it is. Um, I've heard people having Indian chiefs as spirit guides and all these different things and they don't even question their authority, their... Um, if a policeman comes around and knocks on your door you, you, and you don't check his identity that he's authorised and even if he is authorised you need to check if he's being lawful and honest so that you you have the right, it's your responsibility to check their authenticity. You wouldn't be pulled over and given a speeding ticket by a milkman. You would laugh, you know, but people who see 
lying demonic spirits appearing to be angels of light, of righteousness, apostles of righteousness, do not question their authenticity because they are deceived and they haven't believed the author. They haven't, they haven't received the way that has been authorised, which is legal in God's eyes, and that's the only way to salvation and to enter into that heavenly realm after we die. We don't see angel, um, angels, we don't see our dead loved ones when we become a born again Christian. Uh, when, when, we, when you seek the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe, you, you've been granted his spirit, but you, 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 there's still that veil and that veil is for a reason and that's for faith. So if, you're, if you've been deceived by mediums or, or looking into the occult, you're going to get burnt. You're going to get seriously burnt. It may have um, an appearance of righteousness. It may have an appearance of authenticity. But if you don't know the living God and have a standard of, of what is the authority to check against that which isn't in authority, which is deceptive. We live in a deceptive, lying, fallen, iniquitous world. And the more that people entertain these things, it opens the door from that world into this world. And that's why we get, you see uh, people becoming demonic, uh, demonically uh, possessed and overtaken in there for entertaining in these realms. And they get burnt, they get their lives destroyed. And if you read the Holy Scriptures, you'll see Jesus dealing with all types of these, these um, spiritual beings, uh, demons, familiar spirits casting out demons out of people's lives and all, 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 the, all the darkness of this world and he's revealed through the, what is beyond that veil and what's um, authorised in, in, his, in his way, in his righteousness, in his law, in his purpose. So be warned that um, you, you, you will be led down and away from receiving your salvation. The only way to that salvation is in Jesus Christ. He's the only advocate, the only mediator between heaven and earth. And you need to go through him. The he, he's, he's the one with the authority. He's the correct person you need to see because he's, he's God and he became a man so we could relate to God and draw near to him and be drawn near to him by his, by his grace by his finished work on the cross. Now, you seek that with all your heart, God, God will answer you and you will know for yourself and he will teach you these things. But if you reject that, you'll remain lost and believing a lie and that will lead you down to hell. And potentially you'll lead other people down to hell by convincing them what you believe is right. Because the devils believe and there's so many versions of so many different answers to what the purpose of life is. The purpose of life has been revealed in Jesus Christ and the Holy Scriptures, which is a faithful record preserved for people. It's not for unbelievers, it's for believers who've received Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And through his death, burial and resurrection, his baptism into the, into the grave, and his resurrection unto life because he was the eternal life and then then his ascension back into heaven that is the way into heaven and if you believe him he will take you you through that operation you'll go through that operation and he put that spirit his his spirit within your heart in your life while you're a sinner and then you have an inheritance in heaven in Jesus Christ. If you reject that and you're deceived and led away by all these different means, these alternatives, because that's what they are, they're counterfeit, and they're from the devil to oppose the Lord Jesus Christ and God because he wants to destroy you because he's been banished and he's a bit bitter and he's going to do everything to lead you, you and your family down to hell. And he does that by lying spirits and these, these foolish people who trust in these spirits without question 
and they because they, they believe them they see they think well that's true it must be true because we're lost and we don't know any different but you need to question you need to check and you need to examine and the only way to know is to first receive uh, Jesus Christ he will give you the Holy Spirit and you'll be brought into the presence of or the grace of God the Father no one has seen God but Jesus Christ and he is um, on the right hand of God the Father and he's promised that if you believe him he'll take you through that operation and he will take bring you into that spiritual kingdom and that kingdom will be placed in your heart while you remain a sinner on earth and you'll be saved when you die your flesh will disintegrate like all flesh it goes in back to dust because we're created from the dust and given the breath of life as in from Adam and Eve and then when Adam and Eve had in children we are heritage, in, inherited from that creation which is from the dust which God created from the dirt he changed all that carbon atom into a living form and breathed life into it and you know gave it a living soul and that's what we are that's our components we are from that inheritance but we we don't have God's spiritual gift, his spiritual inheritance. That's why Jesus said you must be born again, born of the blood and water, which is our first birth when we're born by our mothers. And then the second birth, to be born again, is a spiritual birth through that operation Jesus completed on the cross. And that grants us the free gift of eternal life. And we won't know whether our loved ones are in heaven or in hell until the end, until the resurrection. And so it's important to trust God because he's, he's, the, uh, he's the Father. It's his authority and you don't, any disobedience to his way, to his son, he's just to punish people. And those people who reject his son, their punishment is eternal damnation, eternal torment in the lake of fire. And that is hell. And that's the danger of um, media medium. So I wanted to give a testimony and warning to anybody who's um, a a medium or is putting their trust in me, uh, mediums and, and deceptive spirits. And I'd invite you to double check whether you you're convinced. It doesn't hurt to reevaluate what you've been told and have something alternative to compare it to double check to make sure you haven't been deceived I can say you have been deceived because I've received the witness and the faithful report and the Holy Spirit like Jesus promised because he's faithful he's true he's the only word he's the only way he's the only God and Savior sent from God the Father he's finished his work and he's on the right hand of God interceding for all sinners all that put their trust in him will will receive him the moment they believe and they will know and they won't need anyone to teach them what is error, what is counterfeit. If you, you think of uh, like um, commercial uh, sportswear and you've got, you've got all the different brands and you've got the most popular brand that's exalted and everyone covets after this brand and then, then you go down to the local market stalls or or all the, all the places where which sell uh, counterfeit items there's so many counterfeit versions it's just like the gospel there's thousands and thousands of counterfeits but there's only one truth there's only one way there's only one word there's only one faith and there's only one baptism there's only one God and there's only one way to that God and to that knowledge and certainty and that's through Jesus Christ and I'll close there in his name Amen